Welcome back to another episode of the Verity View Pod, an Austin FC podcast brought to you by KVU, the ABC affiliate in Austin, Texas. I'm Paul Livingood, back once again, um, Senior Digital Sports Producer. I am joined by KVU sports reporter and anchor uh, Jake Garcia and culture reporter Brittany Flowers. Um, in a moment, uh, we will have Austin FC defender Julio Cascante joining us. Um, and for previous episodes of this podcast, uh, you can visit KV's YouTube page under the Verde View Pod playlist. It is good to see y'all again. How are, how are y'all doing? I miss you guys. Oh, we miss you too, Paul. <laughs> I'm doing good. Glad to have you. Like, oh, didn't miss you at all. Hope, hope you're well rested. Hopefully uh, no more red cards are in your future because you cost us in a big way. So yeah. you're indebted to your teammates now. Yes. <laughs> I apologize for my absence, but uh, it's good to be back. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, this last match, whew, oh goodness, it was a, it was a doozy. 3-5 um, loss to FC Dallas. Um, and yeah, or no, that, that, no, was, that, that was two. <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's how long it's been since I've been here. It was the Vancouver 2-1 um, loss, which is, uh, I, and I should know that because I wrote about it over the weekend. Um, we did not go, obviously, but I was here watching the game. Um, and writing a recap for it. Um, basically, the same thing that happened at Q2 happened on the road. Austin FC scores first, and you're like, oh, we're going to win. And then uh, they lit up two goals in the second half in both games um, and uh, lit up the points. So thoughts on the match from both? I guess we can start with Brittany. Uh, thoughts on the match? Uh, frustrating again. I mean, the, the first half made me feel good. We saw our three DPs connect, boom, 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 which was lovely to see. Second half was a little bit rough. And this is the second time that we have, maybe more, but I want to say it's the second time that we have maybe gone defensive, in my opinion, which doesn't count for anything, but whatever, it's an opinion. I'm allowed to have one. Maybe a little bit too early. We went five in the back yeah, pretty the early on, and I felt like, when you go five in the back, it allows a team to push forward a little bit more. And I thought maybe we should continue attacking um, because we did see what happened last time. And then we just allowed it to happen again. So yeah, it was rough. It was another frustrating game. Definitely. Jake. There's a, there's a hit new artist and her name is Olivia Rodrigo, and she has this great song called Deja Vu. <laughs> and that's uh, that's what happened here. For the, second, for the second match in a row against Vancouver, Austin FC had a halftime lead, and then they allowed two unanswered second-half goals and ended up losing to Vancouver for the second game in a row. So it was, it was honestly like I was watching a replay of the first time they played Vancouver, Um, and yeah, like the structure change that Brittany was talking about, I think is on everyone's mind because Austin FC didn't just like control the first half or out possess or out shoot Vancouver in the first half. They, they dominated the first half. Like they probably were unlucky to score just one goal because they had a lot of chances and, uh, you just wonder like if instead of playing with a, try not to lose mentality and instead a let's keep our foot on the gas pedal mentality if that would have paid off um now to be fair the adjustment josh wolf made was an adjustment to an adjustment that vancouver made uh Mm -hmm. and i think he articulately pointed out after the game that he noticed something in the vancouver attack in which they were able to access the the wings and the outside more than they were in the first half. And he thought maybe that was a result of his team being tired and fatigued. And so he felt like he had to do something to counteract that. And so I don't, I don't even know if like the, the mentality and the mindset was wrong. And if it's like one that you shouldn't have, but it clearly didn't work uh, because Austin FC went from out shooting Vancouver seven, nothing in the first half to being outshot 16-12 in the entire game. So, like, the script was just completely flipped in the second half, and uh, Austin FC leaves again with another disappointing result. 
I'm glad you brought up the the discrepancy of the shots on or like the shots because that was when I was I when I wrote the article and I brought it up just to make sure I got the stats right. Um, in the first half, uh, like you said, they were they were they outshot them. They didn't have they had zero shots on goal in the, in the first in the first half. Vancouver yeah. did, and by the end of the game, they had nine. And so, I mean, granted, you you bring in the defensive sub and like like Brittany said, whenever you have like uh, you have a more back line, you lay back there's more opportunities to attack um and so that probably plays into it um but it was it was so jarring to see because I, I remember i looked at the stats in the first half and austin fc had a significant amount of more shots on goal but then in the second half it was even more like, it was even more so on the on the other on the other side of it um i kind of like i i didn't i don't know i didn't hate the the adjustment to um to put the to play defensive because so many teams have done that to Austin FC and had success doing so and getting points on the road. Um like all these teams that like have come to town, uh like San Jose and Houston and uh and all these other teams that you know they get one or like Seattle got one early and then they literally just let they just played defense the whole time. Granted maybe we just need to practice it a little bit more. Yeah, I, and so I mean, I don't know if that's if it's just that that's it's more of their system to do so, um, but or that he's like you know copying other teams. But like I, when I saw like that he did that, like I didn't fault him for it. Like I get the the timing of it. It might be a little early, but I don't personally discount the move in in and of itself. If that makes sense. And remember, they had to do that without one of their best defenders in Matt Beasler because he left the game. Uh, with an injury concussion protocols yeah. uh, and and if you guys remember the first goal that Vancouver scored was when Austin only had 10 men on the field yep because Beasler was taken out to be evaluated for a concussion and there was some confusion there there were uh you know people on Twitter saying MLS protocol is to stop the game and not allow a situation where a team is playing with only 10 men because if if that were, weren't the rule, then that would incentivize players to try and like gut through a concussion and right. play yeah. on. Um, but for some reason, the ref didn't allow Austin to make that substitution because Freddie Kleeman was waiting on the sidelines and mm -hmm. ready to go in the game. And, you know, instead Vancouver ends up scoring a goal. Um, so Josh Wolf was kind of confused about that. He also wasn't necessarily gonna like blame the loss on that because the goal came from a set piece and theoretically Austin should have had bodies on bodies. Yep. Uh, and, and so theoretically they, they would have been playing a man down. Um, still though, an awful unfortunate time for that goal to come. Definitely. Uh, so, I mean, with that loss, we, uh, they have now lost uh, four straight road games. Um, the last road win was on May 1st. Um, they got their last point on June 12th. So it's, they're on a bit of a slide right now. Whoa. Last wow. point on, last on, point the on the road. On the road, on the road yeah. 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 Last point on the road. Um, so, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's rough sailing. We're on, we're on the downside of, of the roller coaster uh, wave that we've been riding, I feel like. Um, talking about starters and stuff, you know, I really like having Tomas play forward that outside forward position on the right side. Um, I don't care which side. Yeah, that's fine. I feel like he's more creative because he has the space ahead of him instead of just like running into people. Mm -hmm. um, and who knows, this might be the most controversial thing that I say on this podcast, but also he is um, now I don't want to say it. He, you have to. he doesn't do a great job at like trying to get the ball back when he loses it. And I would much rather have him when he loses the ball, be further up the field than be at our midfield. midfield. Um, so I like putting him up there because at least we have people like Diego or Sebastian or Alex who will uh, kind of cover for him, which we saw. We definitely saw Tomas loses the ball. And then he just kind of like stops, which is my pet peeve. When I play soccer, if somebody loses the ball and they go, dang it. And then they just stand there. He did that. Yeah. And then we saw Sebastian win the ball and create an opportunity out of it. Um, I like him playing forward if we're, if we're, you know, starting him, putting him in, I like him playing forward because then it can be less of a 
detriment because he doesn't when he loses the ball. So that was my controversial statement. I'm so sorry. I would love to have Tomas on this podcast, but I had to say it. I had to. Okay. For the first time I've said something not incredibly positive. <laughs> This Usually is my first that, time. That's Jake's role on the podcast to, to be the, the skeptic. Yeah. I kind of role reversal here. That move that Domas put on the Vancouver defender to start that first goal. Incredible. Woo! That was sick. Like <laughs> full head of steam. He saw the defender was on his heels, you know, passes it around him and then just runs circles. Oh, oh, it was great. It was, it was I'm not saying, awesome. I'm saying, I feel like he's more creative. Maybe we've seen yeah. him be more creative coming off of the bench. I'm just saying when we lose the ball, he's not the best at getting back. So maybe yeah. just put him up there. So the entire, the entire narrative and framework of Austin FC struggles has changed and flipped yeah. recently because we spent a lot of, you know, the, the beginning to mid portion of the season being like, why can't this team finish? Why can't they yeah. score goals? Where's the final piece to the puzzle? Well, Sebastian drusi has been that final piece to the puzzle. And now they just can't stop anyone <laughs> from scoring goals on them. So, like, if it's not one thing, it's another. You yeah. know, if only we could merge those two things. Don't let them score and also score a lot of goals. We'd be a heck of a team here. Hey, that's the wow. name of the game where I score goals and then don't let people score on that you. That would be pretty amazing. But Sebastian has come in and made such a difference. Yeah. Um, Musa, not as much yet. I think we're still kind of waiting for him to sort of break out. To be fair, his minutes have not been super, you know, yeah. expounded. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but yeah, and he got... What? To be fair, he's also like 13 years old, so <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's really young. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, I, I, look, I didn't honestly, know he was that young. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 like a part of their like under 22 initiative or something like that, right? Yeah, I'm gonna look I mean, up his age. Not just to... not actually 13, but you know what I'm saying. Not actually 13. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. When you hear about new players, everybody's like, oh, yeah, here we go. It's going to – this is it. And I think we got that in Sebastian. Like, yeah, yeah. Sebastian is – I mean, obviously, he's he's just an incredible player, but he also works so hard. He he is incredible enough to maybe not work as hard as he does, and yet he still works that hard. Yeah. Those are those are the best players. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if there were – if I had the choice between Driussi or Gite living up to hype and expectations – the choice is a hundred percent juicy yeah. because like he's the designated player and it just makes me feel a little bit better when Austin FC is throwing money at a problem for that. The person they're throwing money at to not be a huge disappointment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like you would like to see like the talent evaluators get one right. And, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm not saying they've gotten them wrong, but like finally a designated player, like living up to the incredibly lofty expectations that were set for him. Yeah. To, to expand on your point with the, with the um, goals that they've let up. Uh, I mean, we'll have to, we'll ask. Oh, I just had someone. I had Mauricio in my ear on the, sorry, that was really weird. Uh, <laughs> one of my tabs was open and he, like, I hear Mauricio in my ear and I was like, is Mauricio here? Sorry. Um, but I know I just checked the participants and I was like, yeah, I was, I, I, that was very, very odd. Um, but Mar Mauricio to, for everyone who doesn't know is the Austin FC media relations. Um, and Brittany liaison. always wants to see his face. So sometimes we see his little face peek over the corner when um, we're interviewing players, but yeah. So, um, but back to the point that I was trying to make before Mauricio just randomly popped in my ear um, from another tab. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um it, it is a good point to, to make that it's like this team started out, you know, the defense was obviously the strong point. And there was a point in the season where I don't know where they're at now, but um, where they were like at the top of the league and like, like goals loud or whatever, they're like top three. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know where they're at now, but I mean, I can't imagine it's very good after letting up five and then two and then three in the past, you know, a couple of weeks, a uh, couple of games. Um, but there definitely has been like a, a shift in, um, and how the defense has performed. And well, I mean, we we'll have to be fair. We got, we got Cascante coming on. We got to ask him about it. Um, so we'll address it. Um, 
anything that y'all want to get to before we bring in Julio? Anything that you're looking forward to? Uh, well, I, I don't know about looking forward to it, but just to kind of put that point you made in perspective, the last shutout Austin FC had was June 27th against Columbus. Um, so it's been a while since they've had a clean sheet too. Um, yeah. And I like, honestly, like not maybe one of the goals in the past few games too, maybe were like a result of a bad play by Brad Stuber. But I mean, in this last game against Vancouver, he was incredible. Again, he, he made two saves that it's like, Whoa, that you just saved this team's rear end uh, multiple times. So Stuber's still playing at a really high level. Um, he is and off of a Julio mistake too. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, yeah. yeah. Off of a Julio right. mistake and then off of a cross that, or what should have been a cross and what looked like he was intended to be a cross, but ended up being a shot on goal, yeah. barely got a finger on it and it tipped off the crossbar. So he's still playing at a really high level. All right. So with that said, um, we will bring in uh, Julio Cascante into the podcast right now. All right. uh, We welcome in Austin FC defender Julio Cascante. Thanks for joining us. Um, I just wanted to start off. um, I'll I'll ask the toughest question that we're going to do just to get it out of the way. Um, So being a defensive player, as of late, there's been a little bit like more goals, more goals have been scored. How are you guys adjusting to that? Um, that dynamic change, like with not having a, cl- uh, a clean sheet since the Columbus game, I think it was. So how are you guys uh, well, adjusting to that? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's hard, you know. Um, as a defender, it hurts every time that the other team scores. And we don't have that uh, that chance to score. I mean, we create a lot of chances, to be honest. Uh, we create, we... That's how, that's what we work, like, every every day, uh, to create mm-hmm. those chances, to afford, like, finish them. But unfortunately, uh, uh, we we haven't been that. Um, I don't know how to say it, but we are we we haven't had that lucky that we can uh, just get there and score the goals, the chances that we create. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you get that many goals uh, score against. It's hard as a defender uh, because, of course, you want to just like make clean sheets and, and like keep going. You know, uh, it's hard for. I have a good relationship with Brad as well, mm-hmm. so seeing like uh, sometimes uh, down because of that, I feel him. So, well, but it's about how how we react, react, and how we keep working on it. Yeah, and keep positive because that's the only way we can just go ahead. To piggyback on that, there was a, a moment in this last game where uh, you made a, a spectacular save, and you could see Brad was jacked up. He was like, "Let's go!" And so, I mean, it's good to know that you guys have that that good relationship. And so, um, going to my to the second question I wanted to ask you about was um, at the beginning of the season, you were more of like in a substitute role, but ever since the Seattle match, you've been a uh, like kind of thrust into a every like every match starter. Like, how has that transition been? Oh uh, well, um, yeah, I mean. I think like every one player needs to needs to be hundred uh, percent like focused on, on the team. So if in any case that you have to go in, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, you have to do it in in, in a good way, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So I, that, that's what happened at the beginning. Um, the coach was playing uh, Johan, mm-hmm. and, and when I had to step in, I, I just did it like uh, how I was supposed to do it, you know, like uh, just. Uh, being a hundred percent focused on um, what we work, what we were working like uh, every day, and not just thinking that I'm gonna be sitting like, the whole time. You know? So since that time, well, I'm I'm being like, playing, uh, and I feel good. I feel very confident because of that. And of course, uh, even that the results haven't like been the the best. Uh, trying to keep the the team positive is the is the. Like I said, it's, it's, it's about that, I think. You're also a defender that scores goals, too. <laughs> uh, that's always very exciting. Um, will you talk a little bit about kind of how you got into soccer? You came here from Portland, which is also a city that loves soccer. Will you, talk, will you compare a little bit the, the two? 
What's it like playing at Q2? Oh, uh, yeah, this is very it's similar in Portland. Uh, every single game was like full capacity. Like all the people was like there. They were waiting for the game day. And same thing here. I, I feel like the, the supporters are like re really into the team. Uh, of course, for being the, the first professional team here. Uh, so we feel that, of course, uh, unfortunately, like we feel bad as well, like to not give them what they deserve, but just to keep working and uh, at the end of the day, that's how we, we're going to try to get those, those results. So you made your debut with Portland, which was your MLS debut in 2018. And then uh, you're obviously playing them this year, both being in the Western Conference, and you've had incredible success against them. What's it been like not just playing against your former team, but taking it to your former team as well? <laughs> well, um, yeah, a lot, I, I get a lot of questions about that uh, because, yeah, like, of course, everyone says, that, well, that was your team. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, I'm going to play against them, beat, beating them. And how do you feel? Well, I, I think it's, it's a normal day for me. It's a normal game. Um, I take it, like, of course, with the most uh, responsibility possible that I can. And, and well, like these two games that we are playing against them have been like a very, very good, of course. Um, but I would love to like keep doing the same thing with anything that comes like here in, in Q2, or if we have to like go to any, uh, to play against any team, same thing like on Saturday. Uh, well, that's why that's what I, I want to like, just win, even that it's like really hard. And, it's not going to be how, what we want all the time, but it's, it's just like to be there, be positive. Circling back really quick to, to what we were talking about earlier. So you obviously having started the season in a role in which like you're on the bench, but you know, you're going to be thrust into game action soon, trying to stay in the right mindset to stay ready. And now in the, in the current version of this team, you guys have had a lot of guys on the back line go down. And we obviously don't know uh, what Matt's availability is going to be like for this next game. But given that you have like been in, in those shoes of someone who is going to step into a much bigger role, you've been in that spot recently. What is your message to guys like a Freddie Kleeman who made his MLS debut last game about just like staying ready, staying mentally sharp, and knowing that like your role could expand at any given moment if someone goes down. Yeah, uh, I feel like uh, the good part about the, this team is that we are very together. We are like a family. Uh, so it doesn't matter if it's a young player or it's a, the oldest player here, everyone can talk, everyone can say what they feel and if they need help as well. So like in my case, I really love to, to help, to help most the, 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 the young players. In this case, Danny Pereira, uh, Freddie Clement as well. Uh, or there was a couple more. Uh, I really like enjoy doing that because in the past when I started playing, that's how I grew. I grew uh, next playing next to like big players that helped me a lot not in the way that give me things or things like that, just like tell me what I was going to um, play or confront in, in, in this, in this uh, beautiful sport. And so this time, uh, same thing with Romagna. He's a young player, but he has experience. But sometimes he's a, a, a little bit... Um, down because because of that so that's i think that that's the way how you can like help him uh, to keep that same mentality to be positive and if they need something inside or outside of the field they can come uh, on, on us or on me you know so yeah i think that's that's the, the good thing about this this team to stay on the uh, the the family concept of the team, um, 
Brittany uh, and mentioned earlier that uh, Sebastian just uh, announced that he, he's having another another child, and you are a father as well. There are many fathers on the team. Can you just uh, talk about how what it meant to you rewinding back to the Father's Day game that you guys got to bring your kids out? Uh, what was that moment like for you guys? Oh, it was beautiful. I think having the chance to like um, be with my kid uh, on the field, you know, being it's like. Uh, bringing your kids to work uh, and in this case was uh, a really special moment. I just uh, want to see like that moment in the future when he's a little bit older and you can like, see uh, well, that with him on the field uh, just walking and seeing like this this moment I think is going to be really nice. Uh, same thing with my wife uh, we are like a very, um, I don't know, we're a really lovely family. We, we love each other, of course, and we support uh, as well. That's, that's, the, that's the key for a relationship or marriage. Um, so being with my son, like on the field at work, I think is, is a moment that I will never forget. So do you guys have like do you have like a dad's group text or something on the team like you and Matt and Diego <laughs> and Sebastian? Do you have like a group text? <laughs> no. Okay, you, just had to, I had to ask. You could start it. You could start it now. Okay, <laughs> let's let's get into something that's extremely important. Uh, Julio, you're a fantastic dresser. Oh my gosh, week after week, you are just showing off. Now you told us a minute ago your wife helps you pick out your outfits. Yes, hundred percent. <laughs> is, she, is she some sort like is, does she come from fashion because i'm telling you like you're above and beyond she does a great job <laughs> yeah she, she loves fashion she she's half french so i think she takes it that way you know so <laughs> she's all the time like okay you can wear this or maybe this uh, and if you wear these glasses some point <laughs> <laughs> everything makes sense now even the accessories, like you wear, you rock a hat, you rock cool glasses, you have your shirt unbuttoned all the way down to your belly button. I mean, you know, like you're in the fashion, you, uh, you get it. Um, it's, it's really a great, great job. Tell her she's doing a fantastic job of picking oh, out your oh, <laughs> Are you guys ready for me to do a rapid fire? Go for it. Yep. Julio, you and I have done a rapid fire before, mm -hmm. um, but we're gonna ask a couple different questions this time around. Are you ready? Yes, I think. Okay, <laughs> well, if you're not, that's okay. We're still gonna do it anyway. Uh, first question, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Why? Great answer. What's your favorite store? Oh, um, Zara. Okay, who is the funniest player on the team? Funniest? Um, there's a lot, so Danny Houston. Okay. Danny Houston. Okay. Who, and you can say yourself if you want. I'm fine with it. Who's the best dressed player on the team? Holy Christmas. <laughs> no hesitation. Sebastian's no. Sebastian's trying to fight you for it because you know. Since he's come, he showed off some really cool outfits too, but I think you might still be ahead in my opinion. Um, okay, what is the best dessert? What's your favorite dessert? Uh, tres leches. Ooh, that's a great answer. When is the last time you took a selfie? Uh, two days ago. Was it with your baby? Yeah, with my family. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what should people get yellow and red cards for in real life? Um, yellow cards for being, <laughs> I don't know. Um, What's a pet peeve? Uh, wow, that's, that's, that's hard. Didn't we can that. skip it. We can skip it if you want. Skip it. Maybe okay. we'll, if you think of it, just interrupt me and we'll come back to it. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you like your steak cooked? Uh, medium. Okay. If you could have a non-athlete job for Austin FC, what would it be? Non-athlete. Um, from the equipment department. Okay. Um, That's a good one. 
what do you do for fun? Um, video games. Okay. What do you like to play? Well, right now I'm into a Free Fire. It's a game on, on the phone. Okay. But, Paul, are you a gamer? You ever heard of that oh, one? You, oh, uh, I, I haven't. I, I don't dabble much in the phone games, but so I haven't heard of that one. I'm more of a PlayStation guy. But uh, what, were, what were some of the other ones you were gonna say? Excuse me. What were some of the other? I, I, I felt like you were gonna rattle off a few. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now, right now with, with, the, with the baby, it's like really hard to like play like on the PS4, PS5. So, but. Before everything, I used to like play a lot like FIFA or Fortnite or uh, Call of Duty or you know things like that. But now it's just like sometimes when when I have chance. Yeah. When uh, you played FIFA, are you better at FIFA or better at playing real life soccer? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> he Stay could be really good at FIFA. We don't know. Uh, <laughs> Um, what do you, oh, what type of animal do you wish you could shrink and have as a pet? Oh, wow. Like mine was an elephant. Yeah. Well, I love monkeys. Ooh, you wouldn't even yeah. have to shrink that. Okay. Um, I've asked you this before, but do you, I can't remember. Do you have a game day ritual? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Walk us through what your game day usually looks like. Well, I wake up, I get my breakfast. Um, well, it's different because if I'm at home, it's, this, it's different than when we're away. Let's do at home. Yeah, home game. <laughs> um, breakfast, stay with the baby, uh, go, I put him down for naps. Uh, then I get my lunch. Then I take a nap. I try to like be like very um, relaxed for the game. Then snacks. Then the meal before the game. Done. I when love the, that naps and the, snacks. When does the ensemble come about? When the 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 outfit? When does that get uh, assembled? Oh, oh that's the day before. Day before? Okay. Yeah. Does your wife like set it on a chair for you and say, okay, here no. you go. <laughs> this is tomorrow's fit. Um, and finally, you've already done this before, but in your best Matthew McConaughey impression, will you please say, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> hey, Vancouver, that place looks really cool. It looks like it's very beautiful. Did you get to see the sights or anything? It's beautiful. I've been there before for uh, yeah. Portland, and it's beautiful. It's just a place that like, you want to go and live there. Yeah, and now you're off to Houston. Are, how are you feeling? Great? Great, yeah. yeah. The team, I see the team very positive. Uh, with, uh, all the, the purpose to go and get the win, hopefully. That just sparked another follow-up in my mind. So um, what go into all these different cities what's been your favorite away venue thus far in your career uh toronto oh that, okay. cool that was where i met my wife so there, oh. there, you, there you go oh my Look gosh that. that better be the favorite <laughs> oh my gosh i love that where where did you guys meet um yeah it was in toronto uh I invited her for a, for a dinner, a date. There you go. The rest is the rest is history. <laughs> that is wonderful. I love it so much. Um, I just want to say I, during this interview, you've mentioned, you know, just being positive and having positivity and how important that is. And I just want to say I really appreciate that because it's true. Like that's what we want to see because you know, even when things aren't going your way, I think it makes a difference to have a team that is like positive and being like, all right, let's look forward to the next. There's nothing you can do about the past. And so that's, that's cool to see that from you, maybe leading the way in positivity. Yep. Yeah, I, think, uh, uh, I don't like to talk about who deserves or who doesn't, but I think we deserve a lot. Uh, our team deserves deserve a lot. 
better. The city deserves a lot. The supporters deserve a lot. And I think we have been, we, we are a new team. We are learning. Unfortunately, right now we're learning from, from loss, from uh, losing. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the only way, working and be positive to, to get away with what we want. Before we let him go, Brittany, let's ask the most important question about soccer. Yes. Okay. Uh, one of the points of this podcast, for me at least, one of my goals is to make everybody fall in love with soccer. So will you talk about, in your opinion, why is soccer so amazing? Why is it the best sport in the world? Well, first of all, because... Um, think about you working, doing what you love. You know, what, what, what is better than that? You know, we come here every morning uh, to see like how beautiful we feel and just jump in the field and do what, what we love, you know? And well, you just grow with that list. I think every one player have, have his story behind everything. I think I come from a place where it was very hard to like uh, get out of there. And today that I'm here, I try to like be humble and remember all those times, all those moments that I literally suffered from soccer. And well, now I'm here. And so I, I just thank, thanks every day to God. I'm, I'm very religious and Catholic. Um, so I pray a lot to, for who I am right now and where I want, want to be in the future. So um, there's a lot of players everywhere that would love to be here. So. Now that I'm here, I just want to like take advantage of it and of course uh, give all the value that I deserve. You're such a joy to talk to. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Excellent answer. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on, man. It was great to talk to you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for yeah. having me here. Yeah. Have a good one. Well, we appreciate uh, Julio Cascante joining us there. I genuinely really enjoyed that conversation you can tell he's a little reserved a little shy but or like he opened up a little bit but like you can tell he's kind of a little reserved but i like i like that conversation he feels calm he's like just a calm guy he's chill so but there, he's there, great really really happy we uh we asked him and got to know whether or not he likes torchy's tacos i thought that was a really good <laughs> part of the oh yeah, yeah. i yeah. mean Hmm, like, that's mm, interesting. Interesting. You should you should mention we that. We don't need to get into what the heck I'm referring to. Oh my goodness. Ask that question. But, Let's just yeah. say some people maybe don't like that our podcast asks non soccer questions, and I, as somebody who only does the lighter stuff, just want to say maybe it's not for you. There are plenty of podcasts that talk pure soccer. But here on this podcast, we want to be welcoming. We want to bring people in because I love soccer an extreme amount. And I feel like maybe people will be people who are not soccer people will be more into soccer and into these players if they get to know them a little bit better beyond what they do on the field. Now we know his wife picks out his awesome outfits because Amen. she's part French. Like now we know that Which he also came from something she... really hard. Like we've learned a lot about Julio in these moments. And maybe there's somebody who didn't love soccer who now might consider going to a game and loving the game, or at least supporting this person that they feel like maybe they know a little bit better. So that's the point of us asking us random questions like that. And I stand by it. Amen. Uh, but I didn't think about like, beautifully I said, I didn't Thanks, connect Kate. these dots until now, but it makes sense that they met in Toronto and she's French because that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know geography. So <laughs> <laughs> Toronto yes. is a very, French-based yes. Canadian city. Um, no, I, mm -hmm. I wonder. I, I wonder if he met Drake too. Probably. 
He didn't mention it. His wife was definitely more important than Drake, though. Yeah. She, I will say she does a fantastic job, you know, picking out his outfits because he is very – looks good all, every – Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever they have a game. What a beauty, mm-hmm. beautiful family though. Their baby is so cute. So yeah, he's, cute. he's an adorable, adorable, adorable baby. Yeah. So, all right. Looking forward to uh, this Saturday uh, on 9-11. They will play against Houston on, on the road. Um, it's the second of three matches th- this season between the um, Houston Dynamo and Austin FC. Last time they played, if you recall, Austin FC won three to two. And I, I had it pulled up in that game. Uh, Poche scored twice. No. Yep. Yep. Twice. That's right. Twice. And so, um, and Cecilio scored. So, who knows? We were talking about Poche earlier and his uh, contributions up top. Maybe Houston's the team that he has a liking for to score on. Um, I'm sure. Brady I hope would, so. Yes, I'm sure Brady would love that. <laughs> I <laughs> hope so. Uh, we will see. I mean, yeah, it's always nice to play a team that you've, you've beaten before. We do have like, it's like a quick turnaround though. So I wonder if that, uh, affects who they play and how much they play them on Saturday. Cause then we've got a game on Wednesday, LAFC at home. So, you know, mm-hmm. I'm interested to see if that even changes things because then it's another Saturday game, I think right after that. So yeah, yep. they're, they we got, got a lot in a short amount of time. They got a, a hefty week the, the following week uh, after yeah. after this this Saturday game. Uh, Thankfully, all four of those games are in the state of Texas, and all of them after Houston are at home. So yeah. that'll make things a little easier. Yeah, and matchup against. A, go ahead. Sorry, uh, as a, and from a standing standpoint, it's it's. I noticed it, but all the Texas teams are at the bottom of the standings. So yeah. Houston and FC Dallas are teams that, you know, in theory on paper should be beatable. Um, they have beaten them once. And so, I mean, maybe that sparks some kind of, you know, momentum toward a potential playoff berth. Maybe not, but that's it's a, it's a little stretch right there, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah. I'm calling this weekend's uh, game the Cellar Dweller Showdown uh, because it's <laughs> between the two teams that are in the last and second to last spots in the Western Conference. That's fair. I would say I would say time is running out very quickly for Austin FC to get back in the playoff picture. Oh, 100%. but and also at the same time, and I, like you can never count on a run of this magnitude, but like. Vancouver has completely turned their season around in a very short period of time. All they had to do was go unbeaten in their last 10 games, <laughs> which <laughs> is obviously insanely hard to do. Seems but, pretty easy to me. <laughs> but, I mean, if you want the blueprint for how to get back in the playoff picture, it's to don't lose. So, It's a bold uh, strategy. Yeah, let's see if it pays off. Yeah. Uh, One thing that we can guarantee – probably this weekend is I bet there will be a ton of supporters going. It's mm-hmm. only what a three hour drive. And I will say BBVA yep. usually looks, it doesn't usually look like it doesn't look like Q2 stadium. That's for dang sure. It looks a little bit empty. So it might be a, a repeat of, I mean, for anybody that goes and watches, it might be a repeat of, of the game in Frisco. Uh, there were so many supporters that went to that game. So I feel like maybe we'll see that again. I hope so. Are you, are you going to the game? No, I will be out of town in another place. Gotcha. Yeah. I wish I would have, if I were here. Yeah. I'll be sitting at my desk watching and writing a recap for it. That's the, that's the thing that I also want to emphasize here too, is that, uh, while cave, you might have only had a road presence for the first game of the season, which was the inaugural game of the history. Like, we're still covering this team. We didn't go to Vancouver last week, obviously, because it was in a different country. country. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wish so badly though. Yeah, that, that would have been, been a- incredible. It would have been, been amazing. Awesome. KB's but, not gonna do that. No, but like if the Texas Longhorn football team was playing in a different country, we wouldn't go cover that either. <laughs> We're, we, we go to all Texas Longhorns games uh, in the state of Texas, but we didn't go to any outside the state of Texas last year. We'll be lucky to this year. My point is we're still covering this team. We devoted two to two and a half minutes 
to the last place team in the MLS on UT opening game day last Saturday. Which, can that, you explain to people that that's a lot? <laughs> that's a lot of that's a lot of time for TV. For yeah. TV. yeah, we we get uh, five minutes total at ten o'clock on the weekends, or or four and a half minutes. So half the sports block. So for almost half of the sports block to be Austin FC in a game in which they lost, a game that doesn't that's against a team that's still on the outside of the playoff picture, and a team that's in last place, like we still devoted two minutes for them. I mean, look at us right now. We're sitting here. We've talked for the last, who knows how long this is. We do a podcast every week. We're trying. Okay. No. And I, and I'm not, and I'm not saying that we're doing it the best because there are plenty of other outlets that cover Austin FC more, but they are specific to Austin FC outlets and that's all they cover. We are, our sports coverage deals with Texas football, all of Texas athletics, high school football, any feature story that comes. Austin FC is obviously a huge part of that. And so I'm not even in sports. That's not even what I do. And yet you're covering them. So here I am. I'm not in Texas State a little bit. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to toot our own horn or anything. Yeah, Texas State too. I'm not trying to like, say we've had incredible coverage because there's always room to be better. I'm just saying like, okay, like there's no reason to come after us when no one has come after you. That's all I'll say. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Wow. We've been really brave today. This has been a very fiery podcast. Um, (laughs) And if you've, if you've made it this far in the program, you're a true friend. I agree. That's true. If you have made it this far, then I appreciate you watching because you are a diehard Verde View Pod fan, and I, I, I genuinely do appreciate you watching this far. And that's not like being sarcastic whatsoever, even though Brittany's smiling. <laughs> I <laughs> smile a lot. Okay, I I just smile all the time. No, but seriously, like it for everyone that does pay attention and watch all these, uh, we really appreciate you guys. Um, we enjoy getting to talk to all these players. Um, and hear the stories about like how Julio met his wife in Toronto and hearing about Alex ring, talk about how his wife holds it down uh, while he's getting back from an injury and all the, all the young players and de- dealing with what they deal with. Um, so yeah, um, I guess that that'll do it for me. You guys got anything else? No. All right. Well, with that said, you can get all of your Austin FC content at kd.com slash Austin FC, or you can text the word soccer to 512-459-9442. It's been a while since I've had to say that. Um, and you'll get a link to this podcast, a link to the schedule, and um, a link to the Austin FC um, specific web page can we add to that can we also send start sending them a picture of of me maybe as like a five-year-old with my soccer ball or i'll just take one i'll take another one of me just playing i soccer. can experiment with that if you want to send it. me one thank you you have you have a ton of pictures of you playing soccer so uh, yeah if you Let's start if making you, cards if, if you send me a picture i'll see if it's possible <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll i'll dabble I'm, I'm so serious i'll dabble with it and see if i can make it happen Oh I, know I, I set up that keyword, so I know how to change it. But People I don't know. are already mad at us for not taking it seriously enough. But nobody takes sucker more seriously than me, yeah, let me yeah, tell Brittany you. Flowers. Um, so you can text that. You can get all, all that uh, access to all that content. Or you can obviously text Brittany at bleep, 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 bleep. And then she'll answer with. Yes, please. All right. With that said, with all that said we're going to give John Gallagher a sign off. And we'll see y'all next time hopefully i'll be there julio cascante wow whose hand is that mauricio is that your hand yes it is it's yeah i'm sorry <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> no you're good that went long long julio look at you you even look cool just rocking a plain white t-shirt <laughs> get out of town <laughs> dang diggity always looking good oh, look at that you got style Oh, oh, wifey, wifey is the one that dressed me every day. So, <laughs> okay, we're to, gonna get, we're gonna get into that. One hundred percent. That seems to be a common theme with all these uh, married players. It's like the wifey holds it down. <laughs> I love that. All right.